Hello and welcome to the 13th unit of the Qt tutorial. In this unit I will introduce the QLineEdit class, which is an input widget that lets the user input a line of text. Like that thing there. In this video I focus on the slots that this class provides. Here's a brief overview of the QLine at its family tree. It's a widget. The first three slots I introduce will interact with the system clipboard. The clear slot clears any text on the line edit. Undo and redo, undo and redo any text uh, edits that have been done to the line edit. And set text Q string sets the text that is passed to it. This is the example application, and it has two frames: the left side frame and the, the right side frame. And each frame has a button for all the slots that these line edits at the button of each frame provide. The clicked signal of the paste, clear, undo and redo buttons are directly connected to the line edit. Set text is triggered through a proxy. The set text button triggers uh, the on set text slot that the frame declares. And this slot reads the text from the sibling uh, line edit. And then it emits a signal called push text, which is connected to the set text slot of the line edit. The tricky part are the copy and cut buttons. The selection of a line edit is only active uh, as long as the line edit is focused. So as soon as I click either the copy or the cut or any other widget outside of the line edit, it loses the focus. With it, it loses the selection and the copy button will trigger the copy slot, which will copy nothing. And the same goes for cut. To work around this, I create a proxy slot and a proxy mechanism that uses a timer. So when the copy button is clicked, it triggers the on copy slot of the frame, which disables the button to indicate that the timer has been started and then it starts a timer. This timer waits for three seconds. In this three seconds, I can focus the line edit again and select some part of the current text that is in there. And after the timer times out, it does two things. First, it triggers the copy slot of the line edit, copying any selection that I made. And it also enables the copy button to indicate that the timer has finished. The file structure of the project looks like this. It has a project file, it has a main window class, which only contains the two frames, and it has a frame class, which is one half of the application, and it provides a button for each of these slots, a line edit, and all the real code in the sample application. So initializing the main window is quite simple. It creates a window. It creates an instance of these two frames, which are marked by these blue outlines. Then it puts them in a horizontal layout. And finally, it sets the siblings. This simply adds a pointer to the sibling frame so that they can request the current text of the sibling frames line edit. The frame class declaration is more interesting. It inherits Q frame so that I can draw a nice frame around each half of the screen. The constructor creates the buttons and the line edit, then puts them in a layout, and then it connects all the signals and slots and initializes the timers. Set sibling simply stores the siblings pointer in the classes sibling variable. Get text returns the current text of the line edit. It declares one signal, the push text signal, which is used by the set text button. 
mechanism. So when set text is clicked, it triggers the on set text start, which reads the text of the siblings line edit and then emits the push text signal with this this text with this value. And then there is a little work for copy and cut to make them work. So there is the timer and there is a pointer to these two buttons because they are referenced from the slots. The on copy and on cut slots disable the button and start the timer. And when the timer times out, the line at its copy and cut slots are triggered. And additionally, the enable copy and enable cut slots just re-enable the button. Here is the implementation on set sibling, it just stores the pointer and get text, which just returns the current text of the line edit. The slots this frame implements are on set text, triggered when the set text button is clicked, and this pushes the text of the sibling's line edit as a signal. So it emits this push text signal. The on copy and on cut slots disable the buttons that trigger them and then start the timer. And when this timer times out, it triggers the representative slot of the line edit and it also triggers the enable copy and enable, uh, um, enable cut slots that just simply re-enable these buttons indicating that the timer timed out. And then there is the grunt work, the constructor of the frame. First it draws the line around the frame just for aesthetic reasons and then it creates an instance of all the buttons. Copy, paste, cut, clear and redo, set text and the line edit finally. Each button gets a theme icon and a text. Setting up the UI layout. This consists of two parts. First, I create two horizontal layouts for the upper and the second row and add the copy paste cut buttons to the upper row and the clear undo and redo buttons to the lower row. Then I create the main layout for the frame and with the this argument apply it to the frame. Then I add the upper two layouts as a layout item to this vertical layout. And then I add the set text button and the line edit as widgets to the main layout of the frame. I initialize the timers, set the parent to the frame, make them single shot instead of pulsing and set the timer interval to 3000 milliseconds equaling 3 seconds. And here comes the interesting part. I connect all the signals to the slots that do the real work. So the paste, clear, undo and redo buttons are directly connected to the samely named slots of the line edit. So the click signal, when I click on it, the paste slot is triggered, the clear slot, the undo slot and the redo slot of the line edit. Copy and cut are the really tricky parts. The copy button triggers the on copy slot of the frame which starts the timer and disables the copy button and the timer timeout signal is connected twice so it triggers two actions first action is to trigger the copy slot of the line edit and the second action is to re-enable the copy button with the enable copy slot of the frame of the frame Finally, there is the set text button, which is connected to the on set text slot. And this 
read the text from the sibling emits the push text signal and the push text signal is then connected to the set text slot of the line edit. The push text signal carries the value of the sibling's line edit and this is then set to the line edit. So let's look at the application. Here is the application in action. I set a text here, two bar on the left line edit. I clear the text, which removes the text from the line edit. I undo my previous action. I redo my previous action. I set the text from the siblings line edit. And now I will copy the text. So I click on the copy button and I quickly select a text in the line edit. You may have seen that the copy button was disabled in the time while I selected the text and then it re-enables three seconds later. So when I now click on the paste button on the other widget or the other frame, it inserts the value that I selected before. But because this is the system, um, the system clipboard, I can also paste this in any other application. So let's take this random text editor. I can say paste and it contains the value. And the same works with the cut button. So I click the cut button, I quickly select something, it re-enables and then I can paste this value or this value. The source code and the detailed description for this unit can be found on tutorialcoding.com. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a nice day. Goodbye.